A persistent humming fills the halls. Lights flicker ever so slightly as I wander through the endless hallways into abandoned rooms. Footsteps echo through all around as each door yields itself to several others. My feet carry me faster, more panicked and less assured of themselves. Shadows haunt the walls, hiding between the corners and in dark places where artificial light can't quite reach. They're closing in now. My vision retreats to a narrow slit as they invade my peripheries. How do I get out of here? My eyes burst open as I bolt upward. My breathing is so heavy now. It's the only thing I can hear. What the... Oh, my head! I say while raising my hand to my temple. A familiar throb meets my touch as I wince in discomfort. Did... Did I get wasted last night? My voice is almost unfamiliar in my own ears. Hoarse and parched. It clearly hadn't seen much use in a very long time. Only after my migraine dulls, just a little bit, do I bother to try and open my eyes again. Up until this point, I hadn't bothered to worry about where I was or even my immediate surroundings. Stupid, I know. But, hey, a skull-splitting headache will do that to you. The first thing I notice upon opening my eyes for a second time is the sheer blurriness of the space around me. Admittingly, it took me an embarrassing long amount of time to realize that it was in fact my eyes that were the issue. I blinked multiple times, attempting to scrape away residue from the corners in between blinks. For that reason, the first perceptive thing that I noticed about the room around me was the audible hum of something above. It sounded like those long fluorescent lights that you get in old office buildings, and the faint yellow glow in my now less than blurry vision lent crescents to my theory. Grunting slowly from the exertion, I slowly lift myself off the carpet. My now clear vision peers over the room around me as I stretch my very sore muscles. Note to self, I thought dejectively, never sleep on the carpet. With one final stretch of my neck, which brought a pained grimace to my face, I looked around, surveying the furniture. A desk, a couple of chairs, a few lamps, a depressingly large stack of papers. Yep, I'm in an office, I thought. The sight of such familiarities brought some comfort to my weary mind. My brain already started to filter out that irritating hum. I mean, sure, it had been a long time since I had stepped foot in an office building, much less worked in one. But the meaningless grind of our twenties stick with you for as long as you live. I was as much at home in this place as I would have been, well, at home right down to the sheer resentment of both these places. At work, I was among people, fellow sales workers, even if I either hated or actively ignored all of them. At home, though, I was truly alone. My hand brushes over the old composite wood of the desk, small marks and indents telling decades of tales and exploits that most people wouldn't care to hear. My finger traces a small curved scar before retreating back. No dust. This place hasn't been abandoned for long. Turning around, I survey the room around me, everything seemingly being in the same state of recent abandonment. Why would someone keep the lights on, though? Wait, why do I even care? How did I even get here? And why am I still here? I muttered to myself as I walked toward the center of the room, looking for an exit. No obvious signs point me to my goal, but I do notice multiple doors leading deeper into the office. Using equal parts of insider intuition and sheer random choice, I make for a door. 
The knob spins easily, but an audible squeak reverberates through the air. It was at this point that I noticed the quietness of the room. Aside from the constant hum, nothing made a sound. The chairs and the desks did not squeak as old furniture tends to do. No stray fly or draft even rustled anything. Hell, even the carpeted floor only creaked when I put my whole body weight on it. The atmosphere was eerie and still, but more importantly, it felt controlled. No drafts, no insects buzzed or wrestled, simply because none were allowed in. Every little thing that happened here, from sound to movement to probably even airflow, occurred because it was a direct result from me. Right down to the rough indentation of my sleeping form on the carpet, mere meters away. A slight shiver ran down my spine as I turned to look upon the room once more. Uneasiness coiling in the pit of my stomach as I looked to the desk I was at only moments before. That was someone's desk, right? I mean, it used to be, right? My mind then wanders further into paranoia before I manage to regain control. No, I scolded myself. Get a grip on yourself, Darren. The exit is right through that door. It's an office building, for God's sakes. This isn't one of those horror stories that you love reading so much. Get a grip on yourself, man. I'm sure I must sound like, like I've just escaped from some mental hospital or something. But judging from my surroundings, it seems like being overheard is not going to be an issue here. Prying my eyes away from the room that I had spent countless unconscious hours in, I turned back to the door. Stealing myself, I twist the doorknob the rest of the way and swing it wide open, dodging to the side in case of any would-be attacker. Nothing. Waiting for the creaking door to finally stop swinging and its subsequent noise to die down, I braced myself for... for what? What exactly was that insane self-imposed speech all about, if I'm just going to act like I'm raiding a haunted house? Mentally kicking myself, I calmly, if not nervously, walk over to the doorway and peek through. My mouth falls open as I examine my new surroundings, then turns to an expression of confusion. What the...